Hi, it's Matthew Dixon of Mindaid.ca and when I got sick with schizophrenia it was a different process. I mean, it may probably common to many people who have schizophrenia or mental illness. When I first started noticing some symptoms in myself, it was 1990 and I was in my first year of university. This is before I'd ever heard of mental illness or bipolar or schizophrenia or depression or antidepressants or Prozac. That stuff all existed, but I hadn't heard about it in my schooling and in the media when I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And my first year of university, I started to lose energy. I got tired walking upstairs and I thought, well, I should go see the doctor about this. So he sent me for blood work and it came back fine. And he said, try to focus on the future. And that was about it. So he sent me out the door. Nice guy, I mean, but he, I guess, just didn't know, like I did either about mental illness. I'm not sure. So that, that's what I tried to do throughout university. I tried to focus on the future and so I kept going through university. I bicycled across Canada when I was 20, between my third and fourth years of university. But symptoms started creeping in. I, I, in my second year, I started to feel sort of blunted emotionally. And in my third year, I started to lose a bit of my memory. I couldn't remember what I'd done the day, the day before or, or some things the day before. Whereas before I could remember that quite easily. And I biked across Canada, not feeling the best. I had some symptoms. I had some sort of two dimensional vision coming in. It was, I felt disconnected from the world, but I could still do all these things. I came back after my bike trip, back to university in my fourth and fifth year, I was on the rowing team, the, the university rowing team but I just didn't feel right. So I could do all these things. I was taking, taking engineering and getting mostly A's and biking across the country, that sort of thing. But I wasn't feeling good. But when the disease hit, it hit hard. And one of the first things I remember is when I got diagnosed, put on a medication, one of the first things I remember was why didn't I get help sooner? I so wanted that drug to get into me to start taking, to start working on me. And I thought I, I could have had this in me earlier if, if only I'd known. And I don't know at what, at what point a doctor would have put me on uh, medication for schizophrenia. Maybe, maybe my third year of university, maybe those symptoms would have qualified me for that. My first year of university, if I said I was low in energy, it may have been hard to pinpoint anything. It, it, it may have been hard to pinpoint my diagnosis of schizophrenia. So anyway, that's my, during the early years of my disease, of my recovery, once I'd started to get help for it, I thought about that a lot. Why didn't I get help sooner? So. Anyway, that's my advice for other people. If you have any sort of symptoms going on in you that aren't the usual, please go get help. Please go get it checked out. Maybe, they, maybe they'd say, look, there's nothing we can do for you right now, but at least, at least you got it checked out. Maybe they could have said, maybe they'd say, yes, here's something, we can, we can help you out with this. So, yeah, the other thing about going to get help is that it can be very scary. When I went for help, my first year of university, I did that on my own. It wasn't scary. I just said, look, I don't feel good. I want to get help. But flat, or fast, fast forward to my fifth year of university, around the time I went to get help, it was scary. It was very scary. And I don't know why it was like that. I don't know why there's all this fear about having to go into the hospital having it's it's hard for me to even explain 
and I know, I'm guessing that's, that holds a lot of people back from going to get help is because they, something, the experiences you're feeling with your symptoms, when they start to get worse, it can scare you and you're worried about what might come next, what's, what's coming down the tubes. I, I don't know, I still, I, I can't even describe it. it. I haven't even, it's hard for me to even process or think about why there's all this fear about what's coming down the tubes. It's, it's hard, I, I'm, I'm sort of speechless about it. So that's why I guess we have interventions for some people and why some people refuse to get help and it, because it can be incredibly scary. So, anyway, that's my little speech on early intervention. Hope that might help some of you out there.